Hey, everybody. This is Dark Flame Wolf, and uh, I am filling in today for uh, Julius. Uh, I guess he just wasn't feeling up to it uh, the last couple uh, interviews and everything, so I, I'm the replacement. <laughs> and with us here today is actually a relaxable and up-and-coming uh, rising star of the Zootopia fandom here. You may know her from one of uh, her many artwork pieces that she's been pumping out uh, left and right here. So uh, say hello to the audience there. <laughs> hello, everyone. <laughs> so uh, let's get right down to the interview, actually. Um, so your username, Relaxable. Or uh, in some cases, relaxable fur. Uh, where did it come from, D and how did it originate? And does it actually mean anything? Uh, okay, so my username doesn't mean anything. No. Um, <laughs> in fact, the origin story is really silly and honestly a bit long. Um, so basically, uh, back in two thousand six, I used to play an online flash game called Habbo Hotel. If any of you have heard of that, um, it's a bit like a Hi. pixel version of IMDU. <laughs> Uh, or Club Penguin, or like other similar chat room type of games. Oh, I have not uh, heard of that, but go on. Yeah, um, it was like colorful and fun, and like, you know, I met some cool people there. Anyway, um, there was like a really childish concept where, <laughs> because there were millions of players, some users had what were dubbed rare usernames. So, like, a rare username would consist of basically any of the following three things. So, if the name had four letters or less, if it was an actual real generic name, so like Paul or Dave, or if it was an existing word in the English dictionary. Somehow I came up with the name Relaxable. I Googled it to see if it was an actual word with a real definition. And since I thought it sounded cool, I used it on every platform ever since. But um, as time went on, I, you know, I also felt like it suited me a lot because I don't know, I like to think that I'm pretty laid back and easygoing, but yeah, it's like really dumb and it just doesn't mean anything. So yeah. <laughs> So you're pretty relaxed when uh, doing all the art, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could say that. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, so given that far back with your origin name, uh, when did you actually start with uh, drawing painting? Um, so I picked up drawing as a serious hobby when I was 11. Uh, my wow. first, yeah, um, my first biggest inspiration was the Lion King. So I spent months... <laughs> trying to perfect the classic Disney style. I would draw Simba pretty much every day on paper in the same pose, just, you know, trying to master it, basically. Uh, I would doodle at home, at school. Uh, progressively, I got better and better at it. Um, I kept going for a really long time after receiving lots of validation and, you know, kind comments from classmates. And eventually I had the courage to post my work online. Um, that was fantastic. a website. Mm. Uh, there was a website that still exists today. Uh, it's called the Lion King Fan Art Archive. Um, so literally just a website where artists can post their Lion King fan art. But all submitted artwork has to be related to the Lion King. So when you upload something, they have to review it and you know, stuff like that, and then it gets approved. Um, we can find all your pieces there, can't we? Yeah, you can, actually. Um, I started drawing digitally with a mouse with MS Paint as my first program. Uh, eventually, I broadened, I broadened my horizons a little bit, and I moved on to demon art, and I started learning how to draw things other than lions, like humans, other animals, etc. Um, I aimed for a more realistic style during this time, and that's what I did for a while. For a while. Uh, I did a lot of fantasy paintings. I played a lot of World of Warcraft, which was also a big inspiration for a while. And now I'm here drawing cartoon and for animals, <laughs> thanks to Zootopia. <laughs> I know. And uh, just like many of us, uh, we all got our start more or less in Lion King. So that's, that's no su surprise to most uh, people who draw furs and anthros and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. it's, it's yeah. interesting to hear about that evolution there from uh, hmm. like you came away from it and then now you're back to it. You, know? it's just, you can't yeah. really get away from that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So what would you say your method is for drawing a piece, like from beginning to end? Kind of walk us through the process, you know? Okay, so I I work on my iPad Pro, and I do pretty much all of my work on Procreate. The process is simple, although the order in which I take the steps can change, but the result will always pretty much be the same. So I usually start off with an idea in my head, so I'll start to sketch it, and then, you know, sometimes I won't immediately get it right. I'll decide that I want different poses or different angles. Um, sometimes I get it right the first time, 
you know, once I have a sketch that I'm happy with, I move on to the line art and then base colors. And then after that, uh, I'll figure out the lighting. So once, uh, well, sometimes, uh, sometimes I jump straight to the background to see like, this is what I mean, where the, se the, the steps can actually change. So sometimes if I know exactly what my background will be in my head, I'll do the lighting first and then the background plus. I know that sounds a bit ridiculous. It's a bit messy and I don't really like my process very much because of that. Like it's not the most professional, but I guess you could say I'm experimental or I just have faith that the end result will look exactly like what I envisioned, which, you know, actually tends to happen quite a lot. So it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, um, that actually kind of reminds me the way you said that the other way that you did the process where you do, sometimes you hit top to the backgrounds first. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of reminds me of the old Disney ways of animating where they just did the backgrounds first and then they did everything on top of that because yeah. the backgrounds were never going to change. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of going back into uh, anthropomorphic animals and drawing them, uh, Zootopia. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it the movie that drew you in, or uh, was it the fandom and friends you made that kind of sucked you back into the uh, the art for Zootopia? Um. So how how did I get into the fandom? I, I watched Zootopia probably about four consecutive times in the <laughs> when it came out because I appreciated it that much, but I didn't actually enter the fandom at that point. Um, do you remember that one controversial comic that nobody wants to talk oh, about? Oh, yes, yes, that one. The one, yeah. <laughs> the one we have not really, uh, yeah, I know which one. Yeah. And the memes that surfaced all over the internet in 2017, well, mm -hmm. they resurfaced at some point in 2018. And at that, that point, I decided to watch the movie again. And I remembered just how much I appreciated it back in 2016. And, you know, my rewatch of it in late 2018 was a nice reminder. And then from that point on, I decided to do fan art. Um, my first piece, if I recall correctly, I uploaded as a Valentine's Day piece on the Zootopia subreddit. And well, from that point on, I guess I never stopped making fan art. <laughs> yep, and uh, now you're uh, well known through quite a few circles of the fandom, and you're now a mod at uh, the Reddit uh, Zootopia server. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> It's a it's a good ascension there for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I know that uh, you actually have a unique Zootopia style all on your own, um, mm -hmm. which actually kind of really matches a lot of the style of the movie. It's just in two D form. Um, so uh, did something else? Uh, did you try and emulate it exactly, or did you start off uh, different and then it kind of evolved into what it is now? I yeah, so I would say that, yeah, I did try to emulate it, like, exactly. Um, I, I, for that reason, I wouldn't say that my style is unique just because it looks so much like the movie. Um, but again, much like I did all those years ago with Simba and The Lion King, I spent a while studying and trying to emulate the art style in Zootopia. So when I first joined the fandom, uh, the one goal that I had was to draw in a style that closely resembles the movie as much as possible so that viewers could instantly recognize the character. I wanted to make fan art that could, you know, pass off as concept art. I know that I wanted to draw Nick and Judy almost always wearing, like, clothes and outfits that are different to what you see them wearing in the movie. And through that, mm -hmm. the aim was to make the characters instantly recognizable by drawing them in a similar style to the actual movie, despite them both wearing different outfits in some cases. So... I just really wanted my Zootopia fan art to actually scream Zootopia and nothing else as a way to honor the movie and its artistic direction, which I truly love and appreciate everything about. And honestly, I think you nailed it. Every single piece seems to be better than the last. And uh, <laughs> it's funny because like, like I don't even get notifications. I mean, I get notifications, but whenever mm -hmm. I get notifications about your art, someone else has already told me about your art before I go to my art sites and get the notifications officially. I'm like, oh, wow. So it just it really gets spread around that fast where I hear about it before my automatic Aww, that's uh, very messages kind of get. <laughs> thank so you. I was like, oh. So, yeah, no, no thank your fans. They're, they're the ones who, who, who just love the art and spread it around. So, <laughs> so um, I noticed as I was, uh, you know, scouring through your art and everything of recent years that there's another account, and I think you did allude to it uh, mm -hmm. earlier in the interview here, about six years ago, under a slightly different name, 
Um, and I think that was the time when you said you were drawing um, like uh, more of the fantasy type or realistic type. Um, so would you say, how different is it drawing um, those types of uh, pieces compared to what you're drawing now? Is it easier, harder? Is it more complex? I mean, ha it, has your art, I guess you could say, changed, your art process changed over these last six years? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, so when, uh, I guess, yeah, when I first joined the fandom in late 2018, I made new accounts because I wanted to start fresh. Um, I was, you know, I was going for something completely different. I also have a much older Deviant Art account under that same username. Um, and back then, I had a completely different artistic direction. I practiced semi realism for many years and I focused primarily on drawing humans. Um, but after a while, I had a lot of burnout and slowly I decided that that wasn't what I wanted to do. Like, I was very down about it and I thought that I had completely lost my passion for drawing. But Zootopia very much reignited that passion and, you know, I don't see it dying down anytime soon. As for whether it's, uh, you know, as, as for whether I find it harder or easier or, you know, whatever, um, the art that I was doing back then, I definitely would say uh, was harder. Just I was really pushing myself and challenging myself, trying to go for this, you know, semi-realistic style, like I keep saying. Um, and, and that was, you know, it was quite challenging really it was quite hard but uh, you know nowadays um with the zootopia work that i do uh i i basically have it's very formulaic like i have a formula that i just stick to and it you know i, I can make art more quickly i want to say um so it, you know i definitely enjoy it more now doing oh, okay. what i actually want to do it just comes more naturally to you now at this point exactly but yeah, anybody who wants to check it out, uh, it's I think it's just relaxable on FA, and it's just some amazing stuff. Even if it's like six years old, fantastic stuff, and I highly recommend you go check it out. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But you did say something earlier about burnout and everything, and mm -hmm. I know you said you said you got it uh, when you were drawing, you know, some of the old realistic stuff. But mm -hmm. now here doing Zootopia stuff and things like that, uh, mm -hmm. do you experience any burnout yet? Have you not really hit that point, or is it just like it's just? complete inspiration from start to finish at this point no I, I do not actually experience that burnout very much no um it's uh you know with every with every piece that i make i just genuinely enjoy it um i i can't say that i've reached that that level or like not level but you know what i mean like i can't i can't say that i've reached burnout yet <laughs> like that stage <laughs> yeah, that stage um, well, that's pretty good because you're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. And I did notice that you were actually doing some custom pieces for a couple people, a couple friends and everything in the uh, fandom. And uh, you mentioned something about a formulaic process for Zootopia stuff. And you're doing these, uh, you know, I don't know if they're gift pieces or commission pieces or anything like that, but these custom pieces for other people, um, do you apply the same formula there or do you approach them in a totally different way? Uh, it, it really depends, um, but so far I've been applying the same formula, so literally just, uh, you know, sketch, base, colour, um, uh, well, no, sorry, sketch, uh, line art, and then base colour, and then, yeah, so, like, that. that's, yeah, I, I'm still following that process for the most part. So, when a piece starts getting difficult for you, um, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter, you know, if it was in the past or now, recently, but like, like you're, you're, you're going through a piece and you come up across an art block. Like you're just, you don't know how to proceed forward. Um, mm -hmm. what, what's, what gets you through it? What gets you through those tough times on working on a piece? Um, I'm actually experiencing this right now in one of my current pieces. Um, so fortunately it doesn't happen too often. Uh, I guess the thing that keeps me motivated the most are my friends and my partner, even outside the fandom and just community in general. Uh, there is just so much talent in this fandom and so much of it inspires me. Um, but, you know, the people in my life are probably my biggest motivator for sure. Like without them, I don't really know what I would do. I don't really know how I would handle this sort of thing. You know, I, I do tend to go to my friends sometimes if, if I'm struggling with a background, for example, or, you know, I just want, like, I, I want to go in a certain direction, but I just don't know what direction, so I'll ask them and they'll give me suggestions and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but that doesn't really happen too often. Um, you know, usually I'm 
you know, I, I know what I want to do with, with, with an art piece. Uh, I usually just stick to that. So. so you don't really start until you actually have a firm idea in mind, and then you go hit the, hit the page or paper, right? Yeah, generally speaking, yes. All right. Um, so inspiration, uh, what inspires you? I know, obviously, you know, Lion King and, uh -huh. um, and other artists, but I'm like outside of, you know, the obvious, uh, answers and everything. What, what other inspirations inspire you in art? Like, is it something like you just take a walk and, you know, nature inspires you or what, what, what drives your art, uh, like, like motivates you like, Oh, I got to do this now. Um, so I think, uh, the, the two main things I guess would be. Like the two biggest things that inspire me in general would be like just media and like people. So in terms of media, obviously Zootopia is an obvious source of inspiration. But <laughs> of course, you know, as, as I said, uh, I also really enjoy The Lion King, uh, like Agretzico, Beastars, Friendly Animal. Uh, sorry, Friendly Animal. Uh, I tend to enjoy stories that aren't afraid to explore dark concepts, which is why I really like some anime too. Um, in terms of people, uh, there's way too many people to name. Um, when, when I first started uploading art online, which is to say when I was about 12 or 13, um, there were two artists that I looked up to very fondly. One of them was called Serafina or Tailbrush, and the other one was called Kerry or Ducatia. Um, hmm. They made some of the best Lion King art I have ever seen, and it still holds up today. Um, a bit later on, around 10, maybe 11 years ago, I would say my friend, who I'll call L, also quickly became one of my biggest inspirations outside of animal and anthro art. Not only are they incredibly talented, they are among the most interesting, kindest people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing, and today they continue to be a friend who has taught me a lot about art through Ed, I'm sorry, through Bez. Um, currently... And I apologize in advance if I pronounce any of the following names incorrectly, um, but I'd say my biggest inspirations are artists such as Terry Grimm, uh, Alexa Fencer, Silver Fox, uh, Okifal, I think, uh, Sam, Samma, or Sa I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say Sam, <laughs> S1M or Sim, uh, Ace Scarlet, um, Dante, Pointed Fox, Cider, Ribbentini, Cuddly Beetles, um, Lowish, uh yeah that's way too many and, and i think um, i actually recognize all those names actually <laughs> <laughs> i do also want to give of course a special shout out to uh cassandra or cast voice act and uh mickle they are both awesome people and very talented voice actors and i'm currently doing a collaboration with them actually so <laughs> fantastic it's always good to work and collab with friends and everything especially the, the amazing ones you meet here in the fandom mm, okay. and uh, i mean this I mean, this fandom has made me quite a bunch of friends as well, and uh, I'm always I'm always uh, appreciative of my friends that I make here. Yeah, me too. Me too. So we're going to get to some uh, some fun questions here. Uh, so we'll start with the the positive one, if you will. Uh, what 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 is one of your most proudest moments as an artist? Um, the day that I launched my Twitter, probably I really had no idea it would grow as big as it has today in just a matter of months. I never foresaw that and nothing really prepared me for that either. All I can say is that, you know, I'm incredibly grateful to everyone who follows me and, you know, continues to support my work. Zootopia or not Zootopia, you know, none of you have any idea how much it means to me. So thank you. Um, and I also want to extend that thank you to my patrons. I've said it a million times, but I really <laughs> appreciate all of you um and yeah i just i'm proud of how far i've, I've gotten in this fandom and this community and it's fantastic just um, full, of, full of fantastic people full of amazing friends that i've made here and yeah and i'm happy with how far you've gotten too and i hope you continue to go uh bigger and bigger <laughs> Thank um, you very much. now of course the flip side to this question <laughs> you know it's coming <laughs> uh, what is one of your greatest shames as an artist Ah, uh, I joke a lot about how I'd wish that I, I wish I'd joined this fandom sooner. Um, but on a more serious note, I don't actually feel much shame in regards to anything. Like I have regrets, I guess, um, such as not realizing that I wanted to draw anthro animals as like sooner than I had actually had. But 
I can't say that I have shames about anything. Uh, I have a lot of skills from, you know, my days of practicing semi-realism that I've been able to incorporate in my Zootopia work. You know, I, I like and appreciate the position that I'm in, you know, like I consider myself to be very fortunate. So I just don't have that many shames, I guess. It's, yeah. No, no worries. It had to be asked. Had to be asked. <laughs> As Zootopia, what is your favorite scene? My favorite scene in Zootopia? Oh my. Um, Gotta pick one. <laughs> I, I do have to pick one, don't I? Oh my god. Can I just say the whole okay. movie? <laughs> no, no. no, no, no. You're not getting out of this this season. Only one. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, actually, okay, so I, uh, all right. I, I, I can't pick between two scenes, but um, I, I think one of my favorite favorite scenes is um the cliffside asylum scene so like when they discover the hospital like the abandoned hospital mm -hmm. um i think uh i really just like it because it's spooky and like you don't really know what to expect but it's 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 really cool and i really like that um that yeah, was scene. completely unexpected in such a such a disney film that i mean it just broke all expectations you weren't expecting exactly. something like that Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely one of my favorite the scenes. Um, uh, and the other favorite scenes, you know, it's it's the one under the bridge. Um, oh, that's when uh, when Judy and Nick uh, yeah, that, come friends again. That's, <laughs> that's almost everyone's favorite scene. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because it's but, just um, so good. It is good, and you know, I really like the uh, gondola scene as well. Very yeah, the asylum scene. I'm with you there because you, mm. you know me. I like dark stuff. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me too. It is. It's in the name, so uh, <laughs> I like it a lot. Um, so, and uh, this one is actually uh, a question um, that came in. Who is your least favorite character in the movie? Oh, least favorite character. Hmm. Uh, I would have to. Say say oh oh my god i really just don't know um i mean they really they all the characters like really add something to this movie mm -hmm. uh it's difficult for me to say but if i had to pick one um i think i think st i think i stumped her everybody <laughs> oh man no i really just don't know it's it's um I guess, I guess probably Fru Fru. Um, I, I don't think she's, I mean, okay. So I, I know she's like a caricature or whatever, but I, I just, I, there was something about her that I just couldn't stand. And I, just, I didn't really <laughs> like her very much for that reason. But I mean, you know, she still, she, she was like, you know, I, I wouldn't say she was terrible. Like she was fine. No, but no, she <laughs> served a purpose. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's exactly how I would describe her. Like, she, she served her purpose. <laughs> she served the stereotypical purpose. Got it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right, so looking ahead, uh, what sort of things would you like to think uh, to do with your art moving forward? Um, like, where do you see yourself in five years as an artist? Or do you plan to branch out from art and do more things? Um, that's an excellent question. Um, so... Obviously, if there's like a Zootopia sequel sometime in the next five years, even merely an announcement, then I'll definitely be doing Zootopia art then. Um, really, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, I don't believe I'll be doing Zootopia art forever. I know, I know. I really enjoy it, but it's too niche. And if I only ever keep doing that, I will not grow as an artist. Um, I'm still doing. I, I'm still doing Zootopia art now because even four years after the movie's release, uh, people. Uh, still creating these brand new stories, comics, fan art, and you know, I, I find it all really inspiring. There is so much story potential in these the Zootopia the universe. Like it's incredibly huge, and absolutely, we keep, yeah. We keep expanding on thousands of possibilities and concepts within that universe. I think it's fantastic. Um, for times when I'm not doing Zootopia fan art, I'll probably be doing fan art of other things. To be honest, like I'm not one for creating my own stories or universes. I have never really been good at that. Instead, I admire what already exists and what's already been created, whether it's a movie, an anime, a book, or even a friend's original creations. You know, I do enjoy character design, though. So, uh, you know, I'll probably... May maybe I'll, cre I'll create more characters. I don't know. I mean, I'm currently doing that anyway, but um, 
<laughs> I, I'd, I'd also really like to practice semi-realism some more like I used to. Um, but all in all, in five years, you know, I'll most likely be focusing on outdoors and animals in general, no matter what. You know, I don't think that's going to change. So. Oh. You did say something that actually piqued my interest, and that uh, leads me to another question. Uh, so, you said something about along the lines of just now. Uh, you don't plan to, you know, work on your own stories and anything. You just get inspired and motivated by other people who write stories and things like that. Mm-hmm. You're going to draw art and everything. So I was like, have you ever considered, like, let's say, an opportunity presents itself where um, someone, you know, uh, comes to you and is just like, I would like you to, you know, draw art for my my book or fanfic or you know, my project and things like that. Is that something you'd be uh, interested in, like collabing and things like that? Is that something that uh, you are open to? Absolutely. Um, Like I said earlier, um, I'm currently doing a collaboration with Cass and Michael, um, and uh, and it's basically just a short video. Um, But uh, yeah, absolutely. Any details you can give to us now that ain't spoiler? Uh, It's... um, I'm not really sure how okay they would be with that, so I'm just going to pass on the <laughs> of question. Uh, no worries, no worries. Stories. Yeah, I'm just throwing me out. But, um, it, yeah, awesome. yeah, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so if, if, if somebody comes up to me with, like, a really cool project um, and I like the sound of it, then, yeah, absolutely, I'm happy to collaborate with them, for sure, yeah. Fantastic. And uh, finally, uh, we come to the end here of the questions that I have. And uh, for other other folks who are wanting to, uh, you know, get get good at their art or kind of break into the uh, Zootopia niche, if you will, or into the fandom and everything, do you have any particular advice or anything like that on on uh, for them? Um, if I had any advice uh, for people who uh, are just getting into the fandom and, you know, are like beginners or, you know, uh, you know, just getting started with, with drawing and stuff. Um, my my one piece of advice that nobody likes to hear is just keep keep going. Like, just keep practicing. Um, the more you practice, uh, the better you will get. And it t- it does take a long time. You do need to be patient. But you know, the 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 more you practice, the more you study, uh, the the better your work will be. And you know, you'll you'll see that improvement through time. Like. You know, in a matter of months, even you could see that improvement. So just keep going. Do not ever give up. And you know, if it's your passion, especially, do not give up. <laughs> All right. So uh, with this uh, whole COVID situation going on and everything, uh, there, I have to say, I did actually notice something uh, relaxable because uh, your activity was um, sporadic at best um, before that point. But then this year, you just surged ahead, and uh, you know, obviously with your surge, your popularity came with it. Um, but, uh, did COVID had any reason with, uh, you know, staying at home and having nothing to do all of a sudden art is now on the table for you? <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's a good question. Um, so yes, uh, like many others, uh, COVID has been, you know, quite difficult on me. Um, but yeah, since, uh, since that all started, since the lockdowns, um, I have definitely been drawing a lot more. Now, as a consequence of COVID, I did actually lose my job. Oh, wow. I um, I got let go. Unfortunately, uh, they could no longer afford to keep me, so I lost my full time work. Um, but this was actually kind of a blessing for me because for a long time, I had really wanted to go into freelance and I wanted to pursue this. Um, so I did, and since then, you know, I made my Twitter, I made my Patreon. Um, and I've just been making more and more Zootopia Pana and I've had more time to do that and it's been really great. Um, so yeah, um, staying at home and having the time to do that definitely contributed to my, uh, to my, uh, raising levels of activity, I would say. <laughs> well, you know, with that question and you saying freelance, this obviously, you know, brings up the next obvious question. <laughs> Uh, you said you had Patreon, which I'm pretty sure you're getting some good, decent money to make up for, of course, the the job you lost, which I'm, I'm sorry you did. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's hard on a lot of us. But uh, you ever thought about with the freelance uh, work and everything, possibly commissions and everything? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I will be opening my commissions uh, to the public uh, soon, I hope. <laughs> um, but I'm 
Yeah, um, it's it's an adjustment period, if anything, but I, I will be doing that. So do stay tuned. Um, and, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Right. Well, I just got to say, you got to be careful and watch out when you do open public because uh, you might be uh, inundated <laughs> with... Uh, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all sorts of requests <laughs> so uh but yeah uh it's another thing that uh, as you can as people viewers are going to be seeing on this interview and everything you are uh, a cat of a sort you're sona um can you tell us yes. uh, what type of uh, animal you are uh, so my persona is based off of a european short cat breed um, so I, I like to call them black tabbies because that's what they remind me of. Um, my dad owned two cats like that. I knew them from when they were born. I raised them. I love them a lot. And I also just really love cats. So that's why I chose that as a character to represent me. <laughs> well, it's certainly very cute. They're relaxable. <laughs> ah, <laughs> it suits you. Thank you. All right, and then I have uh, the, what I would like to call a nice question lightning round. <laughs> okay. I'm going to rapid fire some things and uh, don't even think, just put, you know, spit out the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay, okay, cool. All right, <laughs> you I'll ready? try. It's going to sure. be five things because that's all I prepared right now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, your favorite food? Uh, my favorite food, uh, chicken. <laughs> chicken. Chicken anything. <laughs> yeah, chicken anything. Anything tastes like, anything tastes like chicken. Uh, yeah. Favorite drink? Favorite drink, uh, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Ooh, I like you already. <laughs> <laughs> favorite movie other than Zootopia? Ah, oh no. Um, quick, quick, quick. Oh my god, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, I'm just going to say, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I literally just don't know. <laughs> um, All right, we'll come back to that. Moving on, favorite book? Sure. Uh, my favorite book. Oh, I read one recently. What was it? Oh, no. Um, oh, I'm so sorry about this. I was really not prepared. <laughs> That's why it's the um, lightning round. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, I can't even answer this. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm no, just literally can't think of it off the top of my head. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. I put you on the spot. And then, of course, favorite pastime other than, of course, you know, drawing. My favorite pastime. I think uh, just going on a nice walk, to be honest. Uh, going on a nice walk or watching a movie, any of those two. Which leads us back to the movie. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, I should have said that. <laughs> uh, there are so many movies on the there. It's really hard to come up with something. Um, what's a movie that I really appreciated? I guess I really like the, the most recent Joker movie. I really liked it. The Joker movie, yes, with, with Joaquin Phoenix. Yes, that yeah. was... Oh it my was goodness. I, I really think I know cool. why, because it's dark. It's dark. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I really did. Um, I thought it was really good. But, yeah. Yes, it was a fantastic piece. Mm. Awesome. Well, thank you for <laughs> indulging me in that. Um, <laughs> no and it was, it was a, a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, thank you for taking your time out of your day to talk with ZNN here. Likewise, uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you. And I'm glad that I got to do this interview with you guys. Fantastic. And that was relaxable, everybody. Uh, if you see her in the Zootopia Reddit server, make sure you say hi and, uh, you know, give her, give her your warm Zootopia welcome. And for everybody else here at ZNN, try everything. <laughs>